One of the regular videos requests that I get is for a what do you keep in the back of your squad car or in the trunk of your squad car. Well for me the trunk of my squad car is the back of an SUV because I have a Ford Explorer with a double cage in it. So I've got that area behind the cage. And what I keep back there is what I keep inside this big duffel bag. You see, I share a car with another cop, and she's an evidence technician. So she's got all of her evidence technician stuff, and I've got all my training and tactical stuff. And we have to move this stuff in and out of the car. There's no way we could fit it all back there and, and keep it accessible for both of us. So we have to pull things out every day when we transfer back and forth. So I have this big, enormous body bag thing that I keep all of my gear in so that I can take it from my car and put it into the squad and take it from the squad and put it into my car, or take it from the squad and put it in the station, take it from my car, put it into my house, that type of stuff. This makes it a lot easier. I know this isn't an issue for a lot of people, but I share a car and for people that share a car and everybody's got a specialty, there's limited space. Now, what is kept in the trunk of the car by the department is pretty spartan. We've got a big fire extinguisher. I didn't bring one of those home because you've all seen big fire extinguishers before. And normally, a roll of crime scene tape because we use a lot of crime scene tape where I'm at. I also keep a roll of crime scene tape in here, but you can never have enough of that stuff. All my paperwork I keep in my duty bag and all of the books normally I have on flash drive so I can look it up on the computer. I don't need to keep books in the trunk of the car anymore. So. Today we're going to look at the duffel bag that I carry, uh, that I can move things in and out of the car, and if I have to move from one car to another car, I'm not taking milk crates of stuff, I can just keep it all in the duffel bag and move it as one big piece. And we're going to talk a little bit about not only what I have in the bag, but why I have it and how it's useful on the street. So I'm going to bring you in and we're going to take a closer look. So let's take a look here inside the bag. Uh, first thing and easy enough to see is crime scene tape. Uh, crime scene tape can be useful for an awful lot of things and one of the primary good uses for it is it's a manpower multiplication tool. So where it would normally take seven or eight people to keep the neighborhood out of a scene, if you put crime scene tape around it, the vast majority of people see that as a barrier that they're not supposed to cross and they stay on the other side of it. And it makes a delineation area where you say, if you come in past here, you're gonna end up getting locked up. And after you tell people that once or twice, they normally start to figure it out. So crime scene tape is really, really useful for being able to set barriers up, especially with cars. For some reason, you do three or four layers of crime scene tape across poles through the middle of the street, and people see that as like a fence and they don't want to hit it with their car even though it wouldn't do anything. So this stuff is really, really useful, really, really effective, and we go through a lot of it where I'm at. It's kind of hard to wrap back up once you've used it. Though. Pushing in further, we've got my plate carrier. We've looked at the plate carrier before. This is not a whole lot different from what you've seen in the past with my plate carrier. These are uh, polyethylene plates, front and back, and it's an easy, quick don, quick off carrier. I'll put a link up there more about the carrier. Uh, from the carrier video to now, the only thing that has really changed is that my aluminum mag that I keep in the middle with uh, barrier penetrator rounds, I have this diplomacy failure mag cover on there. It makes it a little more tactile when you're looking for the specific mag. I like using different mags for different types of rounds instead of putting red or blue tape on them so that I can easily tell the difference. And the diplomacy failure mag cover allows me to use the aluminum mag and be able to push it right into the ground and use it as a monopod without messing up the aluminum mag too much. So it kind of solves a problem that I found over the years with using aluminum mags as my barrier penetrator rounds. The P mag is the same, that's duty ammo right there. Soft tip duty ammo. And this is an ITS tactical med pouch with all sorts of med pouch stuff in there. Because if I'm deploying a rifle and I'm in some sort of critical incident and I need rifle plates and spare magazines and more identification from front and back, probably at some point medical gear is going to come into play. Hopefully not, but probably. That's been the way history's been going. So there's one mag pouch that if I pull out for a critical incident, pull the plate carrier and throw the rifle at on me, I'm going to have at least that medical equipment with me and the tourniquet that I carry on my gear. Speaking of rifle, this is the rifle that I carry at work. It is a Rock River LAR-15. 
with a doubled up Magpul PMAG on there, configured so that it will fit in the carriers in the cars at work. So it'll fit in the rack, most of the racks, with the mags in. It's uh, pretty standard. There's a Maelstrom G7, I think, and a LaRue side angle mount, a little Magpul MOE foregrip on there. I've got a Aimpoint Pro, which I ripped a few weeks ago, going through a doorway, but what are you gonna do? And an arms rear sight. Everything else is pretty bone stock on. It's been really reliable for me. I like Rock River's rifles because they come pretty accurate right out of the box. There's not any accuratizing you have to do with them. They're more than accurate for law enforcement work, more than reliable enough for law enforcement work, especially these uh, law enforcement only ones. They come with a pre pretty good single stage trigger. I've been really, really happy with this rifle. I've taken it to several classes, the same rifle that I use for SWAT, and uh, it's worked out really well for me. Now. Most of the time I like to keep this in the rack. Sometimes if I have a car that doesn't have a rack, it has to stay in the bag, but I'd really prefer not to do that because I don't want the thing getting stolen out of the trunk of the car. It was also extremely expensive when I bought it because I bought it when there was a big scare on rifles. The thing ended up costing me $3,600 total. Don't, don't tell my wife I said that, but it's the truth. It cost me an awful lot of money. All right, this is uh, my raincoat. It's nothing special, it's called Frog Togs. Uh, where I'm at, our rain gear only has to be black. So I can put a patch over the little Frog Togs logo, and this is really cheap. I think this raincoat was only like 30 bucks, and it's breathable. It's made of almost like a, a paper material, kind of like a, a, a tart made of paper. I don't even know how to describe it. But it's really breathable, and it's easy to throw on, and it's really, really light, and I can keep it back here, and I keep it there year-round, because in the winter, it's a pretty good barrier against the wind if I forget my coat. And in the summer, when there's an absolute monsoon, it at least keeps my upper body dry, and I can throw it around some of my gear a little bit to keep that dry. But it doesn't cover up over my pistol, which is the important thing where I'm at. The rifle I keep in this rifle bag. Now this is a brand new rifle bag that I just got from uh, Lynx Defense. It is definitely not a uh, budget item. This rifle bag I think is in the $180 range. And it is to replace the rifle bag that I had previously. This thing from, uh, I had this Optics Planet uh, Mod limited edition rifle bag thing. It had two big pouches on the outside. But it's it's it kind of got all ripped up. And there was only really room, even though it was a two-gun rifle bag, it only really had room for one gun inside of it because the two-gun system was this divider thing that really didn't divide the guns. It starts getting smashed down and the guns start knocking into each other. So I can only carry one rifle in here anyway. For a while before I had the big bag, I put everything in here, and that's how this got so tore up. And then I had the big bag to put it in because it was starting to get tears in it. And, and it's just not, the rifle bag alone just hasn't seemed to be a really good solution for me. I was driving a Taurus for a while and had a pull-out tray in the back, and someone had uh, put self-tapper screws from the equipment that was mounted on the tray, all the like strobe boxes and, and crap like that. They put self-tapper screws through, and so it was ripping the bag up. So now I use the Lynx Defense rifle bag. On the outside of the bag is three big pouches, which I haven't really assigned anything to yet, but they're pretty large. You fit ammunition and stuff in there, I guess, if you wanted to, or medical gear. But I've got a lot of medical kits, as you'll see here in a second. And this outside pouch, I keep administrative stuff for the rifle. So there's a bunch of uh, zipper pouches and stuff inside here. I keep a little bundle with a LaRue tool, which is the tool for adjusting the mount for my flashlight, and some black fabric tape, which is great for wrapping around metal things in the wintertime that you have to hold all the time, like rifle grips, and a little bit of uh, Velcro wrap that is really useful for all sorts of stuff. Anything you need to connect together that you don't want to use a zip tie for, and I keep it all linked up on an old lanyard that I found uh, laying around the basement of the police station. I keep a pair of uh, gloves because when you need gloves, there's something you don't have on you. So 
gloves, especially for these uh, mechanics gloves are more, mainly for training, for when you're gonna be do wep doing weapons manipulations and you wanna be able to simulate gloves without putting wear on the $90 hatch gloves that you have. Some medical tape, because tape is, is a constant in my universe, constantly with the tape. Duct tape, because tape is a constant. Surefire batteries. Uh, when you need Surefire batteries, you're never going to be able to find them. You're going to end up at Walgreens at 3 o'clock in the morning spending $10 a battery for these things if you don't keep them stocked. A uh, pair of uh, glasses, and somewhere in here is some, some little foam earplugs. I don't see where they're at now. But the glasses and the earplugs are in case you have to dispatch an animal. There's no reason to not have eye and ear protection, and so I got these really cheap at a, a discount store called Bailey's out here. They're 99 cents for the glasses. And the, the little earplugs I essentially get for free anytime I go to any warehouse or factory that has loud equipment. I just keep some of that in the bag so that way if I have to shoot a deer or something at work, I can throw eyes and ears on without having to run back to my car or run back to the station and all that to get them. I've got zip ties, a variety of zip ties. Zip ties come in really, really handy for all sorts of stuff. Uh, black zip ties, I'm sure everybody has a their special use for black zip ties. You can use these as an emergency type of handcuff if you really want to, although they're a little thin, they might cut into people. Prefer not to do that if I can get away with it. Colored zip ties are really, really useful as chamber flags. I use this when I'm um, training somebody if I don't have enough blue guns. Back before I owned my own blue gun, I'd put a clear out the gun put this in as a chamber flag, or if I keep, forget the chamber flag for my rifle when I'm going to class, I can take this in, real cheap chamber flag, and nobody can say they didn't see it. They're all nice neon colors, and these are pretty cheap to be able to do that with. There's an extra pen in here. I got pens all over the place. I got a little lens cleaner kit in here with a bunch of spare duty ammo inside just to be able to hold it in some spot. These are good for uh, the optics and also for glasses, any range glasses or anything like that you have. Again, it's an administrative thing. Keep it back here. You can carry this for years and years and years, and if I don't ever use it, it's not a big deal because the car is doing the carrying the majority of the time. Now, on the outside of the bag, I have a rip-off medical pouch. Uh, the idea behind this is if I'm sending somebody else to my car to get my medical equipment, I can say, go in the big bag in the back of my car and grab one of the medical pouches. And when they look in here, hopefully they'll be able to find one. Either they're gonna see the one on my plate carrier if I didn't grab that with me, there's the rip off one here, and then there's another one that's just loose inside. I will admit that I would prefer that these be red, but they were all issued to me in black, and I haven't put a patch on this one yet. I'm planning on doing that in the future. But they're issued to me in black, and so that's what I have. The rip off one is nice. Rips right off of the pouch, off of the uh, rifle bag, and inside is just another pressure dressing and a tourniquet, and a pair of medical shears, a chest seal, some sea locks, another tourniquet, and some rubber gloves. Because when you need tourniquets and pressure dressings and sea locks, you never have them. And this is a kit that anybody I work with, I could say, grab the kit off of my rifle bag, or I could tell them, grab my rifle bag and bring it here, and the stuff that's in here, everyone I work with is gonna be able to use. And that's an important thing with medical equipment. You can carry lots of stuff, and there's the, all the other kits have lots of other stuff, but this is the one that I made, and I made it heavy on what people are gonna know how to use where I work. And that just sticks right back on and clips over. The inside of this Lynx Defense rifle bag has a like legit divider so that I can put two guns in here if I want. Uh, my rifle is what I carry in here all the time when I'm transporting guns back and forth. And sometimes I'll throw my shotgun in here, but right now it's in my locker at work. Now getting out of the bottom of the bag, you've got some more medical equipment. This is a kit from Tactical Medical Solutions. This is one that I was issued a long time ago when I was on the SWAT team. And it has all the stuff that they, the medics on the SWAT team, the TENS guys on the SWAT team, wanted us to have. So everybody carried the same gear. You got a pressure dressing, a Z-Pack, some sea locks there's a chest seal, a nasal pharyngeal airway, and a tourniquet up in the top of the pouch. So it would be easy if they needed to do something on me, they could take my IFAC, open it up, and everything that they needed, that they were gonna need immediately would be right on top. So the pressure dressing, the sea locks and the tourniquet were right on top, and the tourniquets in the top of the pouch, they'd be easy to find. Actually, a, 
a really good kit. Especially from their perspective, knowing where everything's at all the time. So this just kind of sits open in my bag, so if I told somebody go in there and get the med pouch, it's a little black bag, they'd be able to go through and just grab any of the little black bags in here, and they're gonna have something useful. It also helps having all of those little bags where I could go to my trunk and grab them and throw them to people to be able to treat multiple wounded people if I had to. In here I have my uh, big old honk and hickory stick. I've got a bunch of big old honk and hickory sticks. This is my favorite one. It's a little thicker, a little stouter than the other ones and the leather thong on it is in really good condition still. I like how this one, instead of having cuts that go around the outside of it, have slices into it that give you a lot more grip laterally with the baton. This is a, this is a pretty solid riot baton. There's the earplugs I was talking about earlier. I knew I'd find them in here somewhere. Bare spare straps for body armor. Those are always falling off somewhere. I got a hat for the winter time. I don't take it out in the summer. I keep it in there. Uh, if you're in the conditions which suddenly get cold, nothing helps with retaining body heat better than being able to put a hat on. So I got a little polar fleece hat in here. Hot hands, same reason. Great way to stay warm if it suddenly gets cold on you. More earplugs because you always use one and then end up losing it. And then we get down to the training specific stuff. This is a blue gun that I keep in my car. Uh, the blue gun isn't something that I use all the time, but when I have somebody that's a goofy college kid that I'm training, it's nice to be able to give them this or to have this for scenarios and not have to worry about unloading guns at all. Uh, the more often we play around with the guns by loading them, unloading them, putting zip ties in them, all that, the more likely we are to have a mistake. So I like to use blue guns whenever I can. I bought this one before my department bought a bunch of blue guns and red guns. Now we're provided with them. But this is a pretty close replica and it fits into the holster that I use. So I have a blue gun just for me when I go to training. I don't have to worry about screwing around with whether or not my gun's loaded or not. I can take my pistol out, put it away, and put a blue gun in. And finally, I've got uh, the old 511 jacket that I did a review on a long time ago. This I'd probably look back at and have pretty cringeworthy now. But uh, this is just a 511 raid jacket. It says police on the outside. I put a patch of Velcro on the one side of it so that I could put patches on there if I wanted to. And it says police on the back. And I keep this in here, even though most of the time I'm in uniform. If I am training someone and they're in the final phases of field training when we do shadow phase, where I'm in plain clothes, and we get involved in some type of incident where I need identification, I can throw this on and then I instantly look a whole lot more like the police than just the guy standing around in a shirt and a tie with a vest on who might be a ride along. So that's all the stuff that I keep in the trunk of my squad at work. I'm not saying that this is all the stuff that you need to carry, but it's what works for me in the area that I'm at with the problems that I have and the space that I have available to me. If you have any questions or comments, throw them down in the comment section down below. Don't forget me Give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Until next week, you guys be safe and take care of each other. I'd like to thank all the Patreon supporters and especially the shift supervisor level Patreon supporters that we have listed here. Your contributions are what allows free field training to continue on and become better. Thank you.